The minimum recommended standard size for a mouse enclosure for a small group of mice is 80 cm in length by 50 cm wide. It's important that the enclosure is horizontal rather than vertical to provide adequate floor space for running. The height of the enclosure should provide for 4 to 6 inches of depth of bedding material. Glass enclosures with a well ventilated mesh lid are easier to clean and provide a better environment for deep bedding, also known as substrate than wire enclosures. Wire enclosures can be drafty and mice can squeeze through the bars. Providing a mixture of bedding material enables your mice to build tunnels and burrows and to fulfill their natural instincts to dig. Soft tissue, hemp bedding, cocoa choir and sugarcane mulch are all great options. Ensure they are as dust free as possible and completely dry before placing them into the enclosure so that the delicate respiratory systems of mice aren't compromised. Enrichment toys are an important part of a mouse's everyday activities. Providing tunnels, foraging toys, chew toys to keep their teeth short, climbing toys and wheels to run on are very important. The minimum recommended standard size for a wheel is 20 centimetres. There should be no visible arch in the mouse's back when they run on it and it's also important that the wheel is solid. Wire and mesh wheels are unsuitable as they can cause injury to mice's feet, legs and tails. Mice are very social animals and female mice can become depressed if living alone. They prefer being in groups of three or more, however they can do well in a couple. Having three enables you to introduce a new mouse if one passes away without leaving one alone. Male mice seem quite content living alone as long as they have lots of daily interaction with their owner and lots of enrichment activities. Although they do also enjoy the company of other mice. Female mice live together in a group very happily and male mice will need to be neutered if living with females unless you're prepared to raise litters of baby mice. Male mice are not recommended to live together because they can fight to the death unless they are neutered male mice. In some exceptions, male mice who have grown up as siblings can get along, but it will need to be monitored closely. Mice need six essential nutrients as part of a balanced diet. When choosing a commercial brand of food, choose one that has the words complete and balanced on the label. Complete means it contains all six essential nutrients and balanced means they are provided in the right quantities. Alongside this regular daily food, they enjoy a mixture of nuts, seeds, grains and fresh fruits and vegetables. They also enjoy small amounts of chicken, meat, eggs and salmon. Scattering the dry food throughout the enclosure enables them to forage. It's best to provide both a water bottle and a water bowl. Water should be changed every day so that it's fresh. The bottle provides clean drinking water whilst the water bowl provides a space for them to bathe themselves. Mice really enjoy warm water. Just make sure it isn't too hot. Test a drop on your wrist first. Equally, water that is too cold isn't good for them either. Lukewarm is what I opt for. Also, make sure the water that you put into their bowl is shallow if you've got baby mice, because you don't want them to drown. Bonding with your mice takes patience. Talk to your mice in a soft voice so that they get to know the sound of your voice. Move slowly, half the speed of what you normally would, so as not to startle them. Avoid grabbing them or chasing them around the enclosure when picking them up, and instead place some food in the palm of your hand and wait for them to come to you, and then rinse and repeat. On average, mice have between a one and three year lifespan. They are very susceptible to respiratory disease and tumours. It's a good idea to get to know your mice's normal eating and behaviour patterns so that you're aware if they're not well. Any crackling or loud breathing noises are also a sign that they need to visit the vet. When sourcing a vet, look for one who specialises in exotic pets. Due to the very small frame of a mouse, they fall into the category of exotic pets and not all vets are taught how to specifically treat them. I keep a vet fund on standby here in Australia, you can expect to pay $100 and up for a standard vet consultation. Please only adopt mice if you're willing to give them the level of care that they need if they become unwell. Mice do not show illness in the same way as humans as they can be quite silent. You can recognise pain by sunken or squinting eyes, a hunched posture and very rapid breathing.